Yeah, welcome to Edinburgh. Uh, it's a Thank you. great pleasure to have you here. We're in the offices of uh, Bailey Gifford, uh, who of course are sponsoring your, your visit here, uh, along with the Asia Scotland Institute. And we'll be moving you from Edinburgh um, uh, due west to Glasgow this afternoon, so thank you for that. Uh, the, just to position this, the Asia Scotland Institute was set up five years ago with the mission to educate and inspire tomorrow's leaders in Scotland and to broaden their understanding of Pan-Asia. Because historically, as you all know, along with certain other nationalities, the Scots were very active in Asia, so it's reminding people of that. And um, we hold these talks, and so your presence here is, is great. I want to start off with uh, examining the theme that you're going to be talking about yeah. today, which is China, Quo Vadis, where's it going? Well, I chose Quo Vadis because uh, it's an ancient uh, society, uh, and uh, if there's an ancient language in Europe, it's Latin, of course. So sure. Quo Vadis, in a way, is also uh, indicating where you're going, China, what's, what's happening. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's a country that is hard to extrapolate because we had a good run of 25, 30 years of double digit growth. Okay. Uh, but uh, given what we know from other middle income trend countries, uh, there are certain headwinds coming up. And the leadership talks about this very openly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so we have to be very cautious about not losing the opportunity, China, not missing the train yes. uh, in business, uh, to be very cautious and prudent about it. At the same time, uh, we should also know where the headwinds are coming uh, because uh, China didn't matter anywhere in the macroeconomic field in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. Uh, but now a little change in policy, be it devaluation, be it uh, uh, the reserve uh, uh, ratio, uh, shakes markets globally. Yeah. So China matters. Yeah. And of course, with the, the party congress going on, um, what do you think is going to come out of that? What can we expect? The developments to be. Yeah, I'm, I'm Beijing based and we call yes. this the uh, silly season. Uh, yes. It's, uh, you know, a tea leaf reading left and right, yeah. who's in, who's out, uh, what they're going to do. But I guess the, the big picture is clearly Xi Jinping is in control. Uh, yeah. The man has established himself. Uh, it was a very rough transition period in yes. 2012. Yes. Um, he learned his lessons from that transition period. He will not show his cards who's going to be his successor. Sure. Um, I think that he has done his homework on, on the areas that concern him the most, party, army, uh, secret service. Uh, many people lament that he didn't do any economic reforms. Uh, well, if you're party secretary of the Communist Party of China, you want to control the guns first and foremost. Sure. Sure. And uh, the economy is running sort of anyhow. I guess that now with the headwinds coming up, the debt burden being so sky high, uh, the second term of his uh, will be focusing on the economy far stronger. Sure. He has very able people around him, mm -hmm. uh, particularly Liu He, and uh, they have their agenda out there since a couple of years. Yeah. It's called 2030. So mm -hmm. we expect them to move on the economy because uh, uh, this is overdue. But again, with Chinese characteristics, mm -hmm. so uh, they call it privatization, but I guess it's going to be more stronger party control over business. Sure. But again, we need China to succeed in that transition. If they fail, we are in bad shape here. We are. And as we think about domestic economic considerations uh, and what's going on there, do you see that uh, impacting the One Belt, One Road strategy they've been pursuing in terms of big capital spend on projects outside China? Maybe see a bit of a drawing back on that or not? What's your view? Yeah, I guess that One Belt, One Road is a bit of a hype, frankly. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, something which Xi Jinping came up with, uh, didn't take off for quite a while. He then took out the hammer and uh, drove it home to his uh, uh, ministries that they should do something about it. But uh, don't expect the Chinese to spend billions on infrastructure just like that. Uh, China's not going to fix uh, the infrastructure between here, uh, Europe and, and China. It Chinese companies anyhow go global, so mm -hmm. now they have the framework. Uh, but it's not going to be a multilateral setting, yeah. uh, it is spark and hope. Mm -hmm. It is basically China controlling it and doing bilateral deals. Um, China is 15% uh, uh, of global trade, 2% of global investment. They have to catch up and yeah. close that gap. So it's just a label. Yeah. Robert Lighthizer, the, the US trade representative, has talked in terms of his view, China being a threat to world trade. You might view the U.S. as being a threat to world trade. What's your comment on observation of the U.S.'s relationship with China and U.S. with refusing to sign TPP uh, and its role within uh, the global economies? 
Well, it's a lot of rhetoric coming out of, of Washington and Lighthizer actually just uh, tries to cover uh, his part because he's a very able administrator. He knows his stuff. He's a dumping specialist, so he knows better in yes, a way. Yes. Um, at the same time, China in a way is, is, is a challenge, not a threat. Uh, because uh, on the one hand, they are very diligent in joining WTO, IMF, and all these organizations, but people don't know that 14 top international bodies actually are headed by Chinese, like the uh, yes, yes. IMF and others on the managing director side. So I guess that the threat that he sees is um, that uh, uh, they have this mercantilist uh, approach, mm -hmm. only take advantage mm -hmm. of yeah. uh, their own position. The Chinese minister once said to me, Europe, why do foreigners always talk about win-win? We Chinese want to win twice. <laughs> so uh, it, I guess that's, that's what he sees. But also it has to do with the fact that it's only a threat to us because our own system yes. is challenged. Yes. And uh, yes. we lost the allure. We lost the allure in the 2007, 2008, 2009 period on the financial side. Mm -hmm. Where even Chinese uh, reformers tell me that uh, we used to be their teacher. Yes. And now basically their system seems to be more solid. And uh, democracy with Brexit, Donald Trump has Trump. disgraced itself. Uh, so in a way, yes, it's, it's a threat because we have lost argument, the, the allure of the West is gone. We're here in the home of Adam Smith, of course, and Adam Smith is well regarded, I think, in China as a, as a, as a, a former, former economic thinking. Uh, but bringing it back a little bit closer with Brexit, I have to ask you, this is someone, of course, who's flew in from Frankfurt today all the way, well as we're based in Beijing as well. What does Brexit do in, in, in all of this complexity? Ah, well, I mean, in China they cannot believe that the government asks its people, shall we, shall we leave a free trade zone or not? Uh, so in a way, uh, how can they be so stupid? That's very often yeah, something yeah. that you hear it in the Chinese ministerial circles at least. Um, you hear that here as well, as a matter of fact. Yeah, okay. I mean, for us uh, in, in continental Europe as a German, I must say it's, it's a tremendous loss. Uh, Britain has been a free trader, has been uh, a tremendous financial uh, entry point for everybody into yeah. Europe, cannot be replaced right. anytime soon. So where are we going? I mean, it's, it's just drama. And uh, the way that uh, this is being handled, uh, of course, uh, Germany, France recuperated from this because mm -hmm. uh, possibly they fell there in the trenches and have to do something about it. Um, uh, but uh, it's going to be a big loss. It's a no-win sure. situation sure. typically. And for China, um, Chinese are pragmatic people. They see where the asset prices go in Britain and then basically turn many assets here into Chinese takeaway. Sure, absolutely. Well, maybe the Quo Vadis question is just as much for the UK as it is yes, for China. China. Yes. And my yes. last question is, um, are you an optimist as you look at the world? That, uh, are you optimistic about where the, the direction of travel and how things will end up? Well, my wife is Russian, she's with me here today, and the Russians have a proverb that an optimist is a badly informed pessimist. <laughs> so, uh, in a way, I'm, I'm still hopeful. Um, yes, yes. But uh, when I see how uh, this TPP was dished in, in Asia, how mm. Trump got rid of this, uh, yeah. that would have been the best uh, possible deal the US gets for a long, yes, long period yes, of time. And yes. it's just unbelievable uh, how basically he turns his strategy into China first yeah. and not America first. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm an optimist. I believe that uh, when it comes to crunch time, people in Europe uh, know better yeah. and can uh, find out uh, maybe um, it turns into our finest hour if we actually try to do reforms mm -hmm. because China forces our hand. We yeah. can't, we can't uh, rely on them doing a dirty, uh, low manufacturing jobs. They no. go high tech. Yeah. This is where we are strong and yes. if we don't watch out yes. with our education system, mm -hmm. with our competitive nature, then they're going to roll over us. Yeah. So it's up to us, frankly, not the Chinese. Chinese are just reminding us. Yeah. They are a strong competitor. It's up to us to step up to the plate. Well, I know you're going to have a lot of questions from others later on. Thank you for chatting with me today and answering mine. And again, welcome to Scotland. Thank you so much. Thank you.